Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! In this video, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to make a doll-sized wheelchair from scratch, using common materials you have at home. I put together two versions, a simple version and an advanced version. Both are functional, the only difference is level of difficulty. So whether you're a total newbie or a veteran crafter, there's an option for you. Both wheelchairs come with a free PDF pattern, a link to which can be found in the description box below this video. They come in both letter and A4 format, so note which one you need before downloading it. The patterns include pattern pieces, a list of materials, and instructions, although you will need this video to guide you through the steps. Once you've printed out the pattern at 100%, measure the small ruler on the page to make sure they came out the right size. Let's make the advanced version! Gather all of your materials first. You will need standard corrugated cardboard, thin cardboard like a cereal box, ruler, pencil, scissors, envelope opener or butter knife, razor blade or exacto knife, heavy duty pliers and wire cutters, shears, glue, 16 ounce can, scrap foam board or styrofoam, a push pin, coat hanger wire, about four of them, jewelry wire, a can like a soda can, wooden skewers, rounded wooden chopsticks or even pencils, a stapler, ribbon, embroidery thread, fabric, binder clips, and hot glue. Extras for decoration include beads, cotton fabric, acrylic paints, and rhinestones. Let's begin! Cut out all the paper pattern pieces. Use a razor blade and ruler to get precise cuts, especially in the negative space of the wheelchair sides. Do not cut out the spokes template, just leave it attached to the rest of page 3. Take your cardboard and trace the pieces on top. Side A, side B, caster fork, footrest, seat, and base support require thin cardboard. Rear wheel rim, rear wheel hub, caster wheel, and armrest require corrugated cardboard. My patterns take the thickness of material into consideration, so if you use something other than what's advised, you may experience alignment issues. Just something to keep in mind. How many of each piece you need is indicated on the pattern pieces. For example, you'll need to trace and cut two caster forks, two armrests, etc. You'll also need to cut two of side A and B, and for that I recommend flipping the pieces over like this when tracing the second copy. This will help us glue the pieces together later, because the raw side of the cardboard takes glue better than the printed side. If your thin cardboard doesn't have a glossy side, then there's no need to bother with this extra step. The thicker cardboard is harder to slice through, so don't rush it. Instead of trying to hack through in one go, take lighter, multiple passes until the cardboard separates from itself. If you accidentally bend the real wheel rim, I suggest you cut a new one. This is the most crucial piece of the wheelchair, but it's also the most delicate, so take your time. You'll also need to cut six push ring tabs out of a soda can. Yeah, I know it says three in the video. Don't worry, the pattern available to you has been corrected. I tweaked and proofed this wheelchair about five times and I'm not refilming it again, dang it. <laughs> anyway, stab into a soda can like this, then shear off a workable strip of metal. Then you can lay the pattern piece on top and easily cut out the rectangle. Cut the push handles, foot rest bar, caster pivot, spokes, and caster axle out of coat hanger wire, and the rear axle and support beam out of wooden skewers. The length is written in both inches and centimeters on the pattern, and I've given you a visual guide as well. Yeah, I ran out of space for the push handle line, so it wraps around, but keep it straight in real life. Mark each length, then cut the wire to size. Similar story for the wooden dowels. After all that hard work, you should have this. Now's a good time for a break. This is the kind of craft that should be done in multiple sittings. Ready? Okay, let's continue. Pre-crease all the folds and punch all the holes. Fold over the paper pattern pieces at the thin lines and then trace it onto the cardboard. Make the crease using your envelope opener or even the metal ruler itself. Place the pieces over your scrap foam board and punch through the center of all the indicated holes, except the holes for the caster forks and the metal push ring tabs. 
Widen the punctures using an extra skewer or a sharpened pencil. Time to begin the assembly. First, the seat. Use a ruler to pre-bend the creases and loosen up the cardboard. Now paint glue on the bottommost flap, the one without the extensions, and fold it over. This next step to make a seat belt is optional. Take a thin ribbon about 40 centimeters long, find the center, add a touch of glue, and press it onto the back edge of the seat. Staple either side of the ribbon close to the edge. A strap like this will help a doll with poofy clothes sit down into the chair and helps top-heavy dolls from falling out. Set the seat aside for a moment and grab the pattern piece again. Take the longest length of wire, the push handles, and center it on the pattern. You want to bend the wire at right angles twice to form this U shape. The wire should sit just outside the edge of the pattern piece, like this. Back to the seat. Use your fingers to bend and roll up the rectangular flaps on either side, on the glossy side of the cardboard, or the back side. Add glue. Now place the push handles wire on the backrest and roll the flaps down over the wire. Use the envelope opener to shape and conform the flaps around the wire and press them into the backrest. While the glue is still wet, you may reposition the wire so that the bottom of the U is even with the crease below it. Apply glue and fold the top of the seat down over the wire in flaps. Use the letter opener once again to snug up the edges and shape the cardboard down around the 3D wire. Well done! You should have a shape that looks like this. Set the seat aside again for now. Take the caster fork pieces, add a spot of glue, and fold over the flap like this. While those are drying, take the two caster pivot wires and bend a small loop on one end. I know it's not easy bending stiff coat hanger wire, but if I can do it with my noodle arms, I'm sure you can do it. There we go! Now punch the holes through the caster fork pieces. First puncture them with the push pin, then widen the hole until it's big enough for the wire. Now insert the wire through the middle hole in the caster fork for both pieces. Relying on the creases you made earlier, bend the remaining flaps of the caster fork inward over the wire loop, then bend the big flaps down. Glue these in place. You should now have two pieces that look like this. Next, we'll prepare the sides of the wheelchair. Use your fingers to bend and roll up the flap of side B. You'll want to mirror these pieces since there'll be one on either side of the chair. Glue side A to side B, turning four pieces into two. This is when those mirrored pieces come in handy. See how I'm able to glue the raw cardboard sides together? This double layer of thin cardboard will strengthen the structure's frame without looking too bulky. Bring the half-finished seat back over and fold over the remaining flaps like so. The bulk of the push handles wire should be on the back of the chair. Apply glue to the seat flaps and place the side on top. The rolled flap on the side should face down and inward, and the seat flaps should perfectly line up with the angles of the sides. You can see from this viewpoint that the flaps line up on the top, and the triangular wedge of the seat flap runs along the same line as the cutout section on the side. Hey, it's finally starting to resemble something! Here's another optional step. If you have beads with openings large enough for a skewer to easily pass through, glue one to each side of the rear wheel axle hole on the inside of the wheelchair. They don't serve a purpose, other than to make the mechanical workings of the undercarriage appear more complicated. Apply glue to the mini flaps of the base support piece and fold it up to form a rectangular prism. 
Reference the pattern piece and practice folding that first if you're confused about the order in which the flaps fold down. But it should fit together pretty naturally. Once dry, apply glue to the largest face of the prism and the sides. Glue it to the underside of the chair. Everything should line up and fit fairly tightly. Because all of our cardboard pieces were cut out by hand, naturally the entire wheelchair is subject to small human errors and misalignments. This prism shape is meant to provide stability and help keep the angles nice and square, particularly near the wheels. Find the footrest bar and cardboard rectangle. Bend the footrest wire into a U shape to match the width of the chair. You'll notice I popped in the support beam dowel real quick. That's to make sure the width of the chair is accurate. The sides may have bent inward slightly from the glue, so they can't be trusted. Mark and bend at 90 degrees, just like with the push handles. That looks like it lines up. Add glue to the footrest and fold it over the footrest bar with the wire inside. Use the envelope opener once again to crease the cardboard nice and close to the wire and clamp. Shift the footrest around until it's at a good angle and set it aside to dry. Time to tackle the wheels! Place the real wheel rim and the real wheel hub in front of you. Gosh, that's hard to say. <laughs> Don't confuse the hubs with the caster wheels. They should be slightly bigger. Place these pieces over the spokes template on page 3 and use a ruler to mark the lines. Now take the spokes, you should have 12, 6 for each wheel, and insert them into the rim and hub pieces. Use the corrugation of the cardboard to help stick the pieces in place. Sometimes you can even slide a wire easily into one of the grooves, but it depends which way the grain is running. At any rate, do your best to stay true to the lines and angles on the template. If you'd like to add beads to your wheels, now's the time. I'm making this wheelchair for a cutesy Lolita fashion doll character, so I'm decorating her chair to match. Once all the spokes are in place, secure every single point of entry and exit with glue. The spokes may want to shift and fall out as you go, so be careful and have patience. Once you've applied glue to every point, check it over the template one last time and shift things into position before setting the wheels aside to dry. Once those are nice and dry, get out your embroidery thread. Add a small dot of glue and shove one end of the thread into the corrugation. This is our starting point. Now begins the long process of wrapping the entirety of the cardboard rim. This will become the tire and completely conceal the cardboard from view. The trick here is to not get tangled as you pass the thread through the spokes over and over again. But even if you do have to cut it and start a new line, simply glue it into the cardboard and begin wrapping again. Lay down a touch of glue here and there as you go, so that the threads don't shift around too much. And most importantly, don't wrap too tightly. The last thing you want to do is bend the rim or slice through the cardboard. So make it not too loose, not too tight, just snug. Once you've come all the way back around, cut and glue the thread back inside the cardboard one last time. Now do the other wheel. <laughs> Even with my best effort, you can tell my wheels are just oh so slightly wonky, but hey, no one's perfect. If yours look like this too, don't worry, no one really notices once the chair is all put together. Let's call it handmade charm. Using a standard 16 ounce can, take a new hanger and bend a circle of wire all the way around to estimate the push ring circumference. This length of wire is not indicated on the pattern, because it's easier to bend into shape when it's a long piece. Finagle and finesse the wire until the ring stays together on its own accord with minimal gap. Take your metal push ring tabs and fold them in half around the wire. There are three tabs per wheel. They should all be equidistant from each other around the circumference of the wheel. These locations are marked on the spokes template as small rectangles, so use the template to correctly place the tabs. Use one of the tabs to conceal the ends of the wire. I glue these closed and clamp them together to dry, although I don't really expect the glue to hold. 
Basically, we're doing this so that they'll stay in place long enough for us to attach them more permanently to the wheels in just a moment. One at a time, trying not to shift the tabs out of place, poke holes through all pushring tabs. Get out your much more flexible jewelry wire next. Cut a small length of wire about an inch long and make a loop at one end. Insert it through the push ring tab with the pointy end facing outward. Using the template to find your placement, separate the threads and insert the wire completely through the cardboard rim. Fold it over, cut it down if the wire was too long, and pinch it down. Keep in mind the front and back of the wheels now, and fold the wire around to the back and out of sight. Repeat this for all the tabs. Well done! Making the real wheels is the most difficult part, so good job! For the caster wheels, lay down some glue around the edge and wrap embroidery thread around and around the circumference until you've concealed the cardboard edge. I add a little more glue to the edges to make sure the thread won't slip off or unravel. Leave those other two caster wheel pieces you cut alone. We'll use them later. Let's not forget the cushion. You should have cut two pieces of fabric. Lay them on top of each other with the pretty sides of the fabric touching. Then sew all the way around the edge, but leave a gap so that you can turn it. Clip the curves to help the fabric lay flat, and flip it right side out. Press it flat if you've got an iron. Then stuff it like a pillow. I'm using leftover fluff from making doll wigs, but any stuffing will do. Don't make your cushion too fat though, keep it thin. We don't want the doll bouncing out of the wheelchair. Sew the hole closed using the ladder stitch. Reference the pattern piece and sew a straight line across the cushion. Looks perfect. Before we perform the final assembly, now's the time to decorate the pieces. Using acrylic paint, I cover the caster forks, caster wheels, hubs, wheelchair base, footrest, and even paint the wooden beams. You can paint pretty much any raw cardboard you see, but leave the inner sides of the wheelchair unpainted for now. Cover the armrest pieces with fabric to match the cushion. Cotton fabric glues the best. Looking cuter! On to the final assembly! Double check and re-widen all the holes. Make sure they're big enough for the bar to easily pass through. In fact, the wheels will roll better if it's looser. Insert the rear axle bar through the sides and through the beads if you chose to add that detail. Take those two extra caster wheel pieces and slip them on the ends. Then stick the real wheels on. Keep in mind the side of the wheel with the push ring faces out and make sure both wheels have their push ring tabs aligned. Hot glue works best for securing the wheels, so squeeze a little on the inside, place the extra caster wheel on top, and quickly place it on over the axle. Glue a decorative rhinestone cap on top. Fit the caster wheels into the caster forks and feed the tiny caster wheel axles through each one. Secure with glue on either side. Next, we're going to bend the caster pivot wire into a funky zigzag shape. Basically, bend it 90 degrees one direction, then back the other direction. You want to end up with something like this. Bend the other side to match it as closely as possible, and keep checking with the wheelchair to make sure it looks right. 
I decided it looks fine, so now we must finish bending this wire into a curl that will lay flat against the inside of the chair. There may be more wire than you need to finish this shape, so mark and cut off any excess wire. It's a complicated shape to describe with words, so how about I just show you? Once you've bent those into shape, they should sit flat against the inner walls of the chair sides. Glue them in place. This is easiest to do with the wheelchair laying flat on its side. I glob a whole bunch of glue in and around the wire and let it dry. Of course, if you really want the wire to stay in place, nothing is more secure than physically stitching it to the cardboard. Then again, this means unsightly stitches will be visible on the exterior, so you'll have to cover those up somehow. I stitched down one side of the wheelchair and used only hot glue on the other leg, and so far they've both held up fine. If your caster wheel wires end up different lengths despite your best efforts, you can tweak them after they're attached to the chair, but you must be very careful. Use two pairs of pliers to coax the wire into position, and don't apply any pressure to the cardboard chair itself. Insert and glue the support beam in place. Place it just under the front edge of the seat, but not in a place that will get in the way of the doll's legs. Apply glue to the rolled tabs and insert the footrest bar. To make the length just right, sit your doll down in the chair and gauge how far out the footrest needs to be. Then roll over the tabs, press them closed with clamps, and let it dry. Apply glue to the thin top of the side piece and press on the armrest with the rounded part facing forward. Double check its placement with the curves of the cushion piece. Place your doll once again in the chair to gauge where you want the push handles to bend. Then do so with two pairs of pliers. Cut a strip of fabric and wrap it around the ends of the wire to form handles. And lastly, for finishing touches, you can go back and paint the inner sides of the chair, as well as touch up or recolor the coat hanger wire. And with that, you're done! While the advanced version of the wheelchair is considerably more complex and time-consuming to create, I hope you agree that the finished product is well worth the effort. The real spokes, 3D pushring, and caster wheels that can actually pivot are details that bring a classy touch of realism to the project. I ended up covering the visible stitches on the right side of the wheelchair with floral designs. And I can't believe I'm only just now noticing this, but I forgot to paint the caster wheel wires white. Oops. It's too late for the video, but I'll definitely be touching those up. Although it's as sturdy a design as I could muster, it should be said that these wheelchairs are for display purpose only. They would not hold up long to child's play, particularly if water got involved. If you do want to make this for a child, I recommend the simple version because it's a bit sturdier. The articulation on the advanced version's caster wheels make it more delicate, for example. Anyway, I just thought I should include the disclaimer. Before we wrap this up, let's run through a comparison of which dolls fit this wheelchair. I designed it to match the standard Monster High girls, but they actually work with a variety of brands. I'll put the doll brands on screen as we scroll through, and you can judge how well they fit. Because of the inset armrests, dolls with more booty don't fit in the seat. I reckon this could be remedied by moving the armrests further out, or leaving them off altogether. Also, many of the doll's legs are too long for the wheelchair, although you saw how we can determine the length of the footrest to match our doll when making the wheelchair. So, in the end, I'm happy to say the delightful wheelchair design will fit nearly any standard fashion doll on the market. Thank you so much for joining me! I really hope you found my patterns and instructions helpful for making your own doll-sized wheelchair. 
If this version looked like too much work, don't forget there's a simple version available too. In fact, the advanced one was so complicated, I'd figure I'd better offer a simple version or else no one's gonna wanna make it. But yeah, I hope you agree, both versions look great in their own way. If you'd like to see the doll that inspired me to make tiny wheelchairs in the first place, head on over and watch Charlie's video. I'll catch you over there. Thanks for watching, and stay artsy! Annyeong!